Hey guys, how's it going everybody? This is the Storm Pow, and welcome to a video where I'm going to be showing you guys um, pretty much exactly how I make a video. You know, this is going to have my uh, project settings, my render settings, and at the end I'm going to show you guys how I encode my videos. And um, this is just for anybody who's curious. I, I'm not going to lie, I haven't gotten a lot of people straight up asking me to. I've had a few, but I, I thought that I might would do this for fun anyway um, to share my method that I do. Um, just for anybody who's curious what goes on to make a video from me. Okay, so here is just a pretty simple recording from my Hop Hog. I record in M2TS, and I highly recommend you do so as well if you're recording in HD. All you have to do in the ArcSoft um, capture module is um, to... Excuse me, that was just some pop-up. It usually does that whenever I start using Camtasia. Um, but anyway, um, what I recommend is that you just go to ArcSoft and you click the PlayStation 3 option, and that will let you record in M2TS formatting. Um, because I, some people think that when you click PlayStation 3, that means that you're recording PlayStation 3 footage. That is a very common misconception, and um, fuck it, I'll just go ahead and use Windows 7 Basic. Oh my gosh, my computer is so slow. I don't know why it's doing this today. But um, anyway, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by my fucking computer. Um, the PlayStation 3 option, M2TS is just a format that the PlayStation 3 will recognize as a playback option. And MP4 is an option that the Xbox 360 will accept as a playback option. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean that you should only click M2TS if you were playing a PS3 game and recording it. Um, it just means that you're playing in a PS3 friendly format. But anyway, I've talked too much about that. Um, the basic version of that is recording M2TS, okay? And um, that is that you're going to drag it into the timeline. This is a raw file from... This is just Ultimate Tenkaichi, Powtato, Fighting Baby. Um, I just recorded a random clip, um, as you can see here. And then, usually what I do if I have a commentary, I turn the volume on this to about negative 35.7. It kind of depends on what game it is, how loud it is. How loud you want that, like how important your commentary is to it. But typically speaking, um, I turn it down to about negative 35.7. But um, anyway, I'll leave it up full gain on here for this. What I do is I right click on it and I go to properties. And I click disable resample, reduce interlace flicker, and I uncheck the maintain aspect ratio. And now I'm, I need to go into the event pan crop of the clip. And I click on the first keyframe right here. And then I choose my own little preset that I have which is HDPVR, it doesn't matter what you name it, but, okay, see, look, this is what I did. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Oh, well, I said I was going to undo it. Undo, there we go. So you can notice these little black lines at the very edge of the video. And there we go. That's sort of a before and after kind of thing. I'm just undoing and redoing this. Um... So yeah, we're just getting rid of those bars right there. Um, here are my exact measurements that I have for that if you want to use the exact thing. Um, but really, it's not that hard to just go ahead and make it yourself. My width is 1912.0. Height is 1080.0. X center is 962.0. Y center is 5.40. Angle is 0, 0.0. X center is 962.0. Y center is 5. Point, uh, excuse me, 540. Point zero smoothness and everything doesn't change and note right here that the maintain aspect ratio you can change that right here instead of the properties menu if you would prefer um, stretch to fill frame just leave it yes um, zoom I have that at 29.3 but really all this is more of your workspace this doesn't really affect how this actually turns out um, and yeah that is that um, one more thing that I do that has to go with the interlace I should have probably started this out at the beginning actually um, but here are my project settings that I start with. I go ahead and choose the template, which is the HDV 720 to 30p, um, 1280 by 720, 29.970 FPS. And then I sort of work from that. And really the only thing that I change is the deinterlace method. Now, right here is a little tricky. Interpolate fields is what I've been using recently. Now, in some of my older videos, I used blend fields because I thought that interpolate fields was a bad idea at first. Um, but you definitely do not want to use none because um, M2TS gets a little bit less interlace than some formats like MP4 does, but... Um, it still has some, and pretty much any kind of HD file has a little bit of interlace, and it does not hurt to try to get rid of it, you know, because it's really this simple. Um, I'm going to show you guys some comparison, okay? I'm going to find a shot that has a lot of motion going on, because for those of you who don't know, interlace is basically ghosting in a clip, and I'm just kind of moving frame by frame. Here we go. This is a little frame that has a shit ton of um, interlace, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Properties, and I'm going to do... Um, 
I think it was Force Resample or whatever. I think, or no, it was Smart Resample. That's what it was already on. And I'm gonna uncheck the. Um, I mean, I'm going to uncheck the reduce interlace flicker that I had, and you know, this is of course isn't going to fix it much at all. And let's go to properties, and I'm just going to show you some before and after kind of shots. Um, when we go to blend fields and we try to apply it, you know, really nothing that much at all. But when we go to interpolate fields, apply, and it's pretty much gone. All of your interlace is basically gone. So. Um, in some videos that don't have much interlace, you can go with blend fields, but I honestly would just recommend interpolate fields. Not sure if it's much of a coincidence or anything, but when I use interpolate fields, I typically get somewhat larger file sizes, and the render times take a little bit longer, but that's just sort of, you know, some random things that have happened. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fix this back up. Um, you can't notice much of a huge difference when you check the, the disable resample and stuff, but, um... Uh, excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold today, but um, you can't notice a huge difference, but it does not hurt to do it, and that's what I do, and I haven't had really any problems with it. And now we're just going to pretty this up a little bit. Color corrector, this is all that I do on a typical video. I just load up my preset, and there you go. So here are some before and after. You know, pretty much, like, without a doubt, it looks better, if you ask me, um, with this color correction. Some games that are a little darker, you may want to tweak your settings up, but here is basically all that I have right here. Saturation, uh, excuse me, 1.361, gamma, 0 0.925, gain, 1.164, 1 excuse me, offset, negative 18.6, there you go, and I leave these colors pretty much the same. Now, like I said, some games that are darker or look a little different, you might have to change up a little bit, but typically speaking, this is all that I do for a typical video. Now, you can go a whole lot more in depth, you know, and you can just really make your video look fucking gorgeous you know if you want to add a little bit of um i don't know i'm trying to think of something that would look good you know you can add some sharpening or whatever to it um i wouldn't add a whole lot of that but um i know some people add like a very very slight amount to it um you know you can do a lot of things just to tweak up your video and make it look pretty and cute and stuff but that's about all that i do is some typical color corrections so you know um I think that it looks pretty decent this way, but um, on some videos I kind of whore out some more effects, but um, please note that the more effects you use, the longer your render time is going to be, the bigger your file size is going to be, but like I said, for a typical video, that's about all that I do for it, and then to go to the rendering, I just go to File, Render As, and I do an uncompressed AVI file. Now this is going to give you some huge file sizes depending on how long your video is. Um, like, a 10 minute video for me, in 720p by the way, um, you know, because I don't really recommend doing 1080p because not many people watch YouTube videos in 1080p unless you're just a super overachiever, um, but a 720p video that's roughly 10 minutes long, as an uncompressed AVI, I get roughly 60 gigabytes, and that's how big the file is, okay, but, um, of course, I'm not going to render all this out because this is about nine and a half minutes long. So I'm just going to select a small little loop region that is nine seconds long right here. And we're going to render this and make sure that I have the render loop region. And we're just going to say derp test and as an uncompressed AVI. Now, the render times are really pretty quick for AVIs because um, your computer doesn't need as much time to compress the file because that's what an AVI is. It's a completely uncompressed format. They're not having to make the file size any smaller. So, you know, you can watch it render in the preview window. Um, and really, this doesn't use up that much RAM either. So, for people with slower computers, you may prefer this. As long as you have a decent bit of hard drive sp um, space, then you really shouldn't have to worry about this. And once we're done with that, you're going to need to download this right here. Um, the Easy H264 um, encoder by Twivo. This, this is where I get it from. They, well, I'll put a link in the description for this anyway. But once you click on the page, you should go to a page like this. Scroll down a little bit, and you'll find the download section. And you can go to a .zip or a .rar file, whichever one you want to use. Um, and then it's got some little like tips on installation but it's really pretty simple it's no more complex than any other kind of installation um but anyway once you get it you have your file rendered out and you need to go to the a easy h264 encoder it's right up here i put it on my desktop um and here it is it's a very simple little interface here you just click the video file now this is your avi file so i'm going to click derptest.avi and now I'm going to go to the output file. And this is where we're going to make it an MP4 file. Because, um, yeah, see right here, we only have the one option for the H.264 MPEG container. And we're going to name this, I just usually do derp test all in lowercase. Um, just so I can sort of distinguish the files in my, um, 
in my my videos page. I just make one of them have some capital letters, not all caps usually, but and then the other one is completely lowercase. Just leave the video FPS at 29.970 because that's what our project setting was. You typically want to keep that the same as whatever your project setting was um, and the preset. Now this is where you can sort of decide what you want to do a little bit more. The Brassaments, I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, this is like the best quality. This will look pretty much the same as your uncompressed AVI will, but the file sizes will be pretty decent size, like, um, typically speaking, maybe a 10 minute video using the brass immense will be somewhere between 500 to 900 megabytes, you know, a 10 minute 720p video will, um, so, you know, you can kind of decide that, depends on how fast your upload speed, um, how, how fast your upload speed is, and how important the quality is to you, but um, typically speaking, I go ahead and choose the YouTube Ready. This gives you adequate quality, really. Check out any of my recent YouTube videos, my recent like gaming ones, like my Dragon Ball Z duels, and nine out of ten times they would have been done using this YouTube Ready um, preset. And you know, if that just sort of yeah, excuse me, gives you an idea of um, what kind of quality you'd be looking at. Though a lot of times in my shorter videos, I go ahead and choose Brass Immense because um, you know, then the file sizes it aren't going to be that big anyway. So you know, you might as well give it beast ass quality. Um, those are about the only two that I ever mess with. Sometimes I'll choose extreme HD 720p if I feel like doing a medium between stream and brass immense. But typically speaking, my videos are either in brass immense or um, stream. Um, if you're one of the kind of people like me who leaves your uploads on while you're gone or whatever, then you might want to you might want to just go ahead and choose brass immense because you're not going to be using your computer anyway while you're uploading. But um, I upload a lot of videos at one time, so that's why I don't do Brass Immense, because then I can only upload, like, one every freaking now and then. But anyway, so, the Stream HD 720p, you just click the Start Encoding button, which I will in a second, um, right after I say this. Um, encoding uses up a decent bit of your computer's RAM. Um, I, I am on a laptop, so granted my computer isn't that fast anyway, but I have an i7 processor and 4 gigabytes of RAM, and my computer still gets a little toasty sometimes when I'm running some other programs and trying to do some other stuff while I'm encoding. So I tend to encode a lot while I go downstairs and play Xbox or something, just something away from my computer, you know, um, and encoding times can take a little bit of time, really not that much longer than your render did, uh, most of the time, if it's a 10 minute 720p video, don't expect an encode that's longer than an hour, unless your computer is particularly slow, um, and then your file sizes should be somewhere around, like, I would say a rough estimate between 150 megabytes and 280. I don't think that I've had anything smaller or bigger than that using the, uh, stream YouTube setting. Um, and that, and of course I'm referring to a roughly 10 minute long 720p video. So those file sizes are, are pretty reasonable. My internet sucks ass and I can still tolerate uploading those kind of file sizes. So I'm sure you guys can, you know, unless your internet is worse than mine, which is... Pretty unlikely, but um, yeah, so that's really about all I do. Once you click the start encoding button, you'll get this little pop-up. Make sure to press OK on this. And then the command prompt will open up, and it will start to encode your video. And you can watch how many frames it's at, you know, so if you know how many frames are in your video. Um, so like, let's say I was rendering, rendering out this whole thing. I can go right here, and then to the very end of the video, and it says that it has about 16,945 frames. So then I would wait for that to reach about that. Basically, like, it goes through all the frames in the video once, and then it has to, like, do some other stuff, then it goes through them again, so that's kind of why it takes a little long. Um, wow, that was actually really fast, um, because that was, what, a nine-second video? But, yeah, um, one more thing that I do that I just remembered to talk about, when you're using the Easy H.264 encoder, um... If you want to turn a 720p video into 360p, which is, of course, you know, twice, I mean, half the size of that, then you just need to go to that, of course. But you cannot turn 720p into 1080p because that would be stupid. You don't render something in 720p and then resize it to 1080p. That would just give you a huge file size and, like, no increase in quality. But if you rendered in 1080p and you, like, put it into here, then you can have the options for 1080p encoding, 720p encoding, and 360p encoding. Like, imagine a 1080p video shrunk down to 360p. Holy jizz, that sounds like that's some good quality right there. Um, but anyway, yeah, that is the end of this tutorial, I do believe. Um, that is what goes on behind the scenes in my Vigimos. So, yeah, that is the end of this tutorial. I would like to thank you all for watching. Hope you have a nice day and goodbye. Bye.